Hello and welcome to Real Opinions and today I am going to be reviewing John Wick Chapter 2. So the first John Wick came out in 2014 I believe and it was kind of for me I kind of heralded it as a promising new hope for the action genre because of its director. Uh, whilst I didn't think that the first film necessarily you know, reinvented the action genre or did anything too original. What made that film stand out to me was just the execution more than anything. It took a very, very basic action premise, a very, very kind of simple revenge story with stock characters, but used that as a framework around which to build really, really tight, really, really well-made set pieces. That was basically what it did. It, it, it had a very, very simple idea. It knew what it wanted to do. It wanted to be a good action film, so it didn't it didn't have any pretensions, it didn't do anything too special, it just went, right, how can we string together a load of action sequences and make them really cool? And for what it did, I think it did a genuinely decent job. The the gun fu choreography was really cool, uh, and I think that the direction was more than efficient. It was it was in entertaining. It was entertaining. And like I said, I think that it, ma it made me pay attention to its director and think, ooh, I want to see whatever project he does next. But for me, that's about as far as it went. All of that's completely fine for a standalone film, but I didn't think that it necessarily set itself up too well for a sequel. It worked great as a standalone, but I'll confess I wasn't too thrilled about the promise of more John Wick. I felt like there was very little room for development or expansion in terms of story, character, or even the general concept. In fact, I would say that the promise of a sequel actually made me a little apprehensive. I thought all we're going to get is a derivative copy and paste job that basically rehashes the original but with a bigger budget and yeah truth be told i thought we'd just get another generic action franchise one that would just kind of become stale and overstay its welcome after a while and based on the evidence of john wick 2 i can happily more than happily report that i was 100 percent wrong this sequel makes so many smart decisions and basically builds upon everything that was good about the first film and fixes the things that weren't so good. In particular, I think it makes the really smart decision to take the intriguing mythology that was vaguely hinted at in the first film and build upon it further, to the point where it basically becomes the cornerstone of the plot. And I think in doing that very thing, it helps to separate John Wick and kind of give its world its own identity so that it feels distinct from all of the other action films out there. In short, I think that this first film basically manages to stand out and really takes quite significant measures to elevate its storytelling and world building to the same level of quality as the action. So this time around, uh, John Wick finds himself in the inconvenient position of having to honour a promise that he made years ago in exchange for a favour. As you can expect, uh, said promise basically necessitates that he's going to have to kill someone. More specifically, the client, who is this Italian gangster, wants John to kill his own sister. Uh, not John's sister, I mean the Italian gangster wants John to kill the Italian gangster's sister, so that he can usurp her position in the criminal underworld. But given that John has this commitment, I'd say commitment in a very loose, loose way, because he, he, he seems half-hearted. He has a, a commitment to retiring, so he refuses to do the job. He says, like, I'm, I'm out, I'm not doing this stuff anymore. But uh, the gangster won't take no for an answer, and he destroys John's home. And that's where you think that this is basically just going to rehash the first film. You think, oh, okay, so they destroyed his home, like they destroyed his car in the first one, now he's going to go get revenge, and we're just going to rinse and repeat. But no, because what happens is John goes to the Continental, which is the assassin society from the first film. And it turns out that the Continental have these really strict rules rules about honoring deals and so they say that look if you fail to uphold your end of the bargain with this guy then he has every right to kill you that's that's our policy and not only that but the society itself would be expressly against John if he didn't kind of follow through with what he said he was going to do. So John has no choice but to actually do this job even though he doesn't want to do it. So he travels to Rome and goes to to assassinate this guy's sister. However, his plan is that he will, he will, he will honour the deal and then as soon as he's done that, he's free from any obligation and he's then going to just go kill the Italian guy anyway. Which I thought was quite a funny plot point. So it's, he's got to do the guy's job for him before he can kill him which i thought that's that's quite neat that's quite 
funny. And right from the bat, I think that this is a much stronger premise than the first films, mainly because it gives us a look into the inner workings of the Continental, this, this assassin society. Because in this film, we learn everything from the society's rules, which I thought were really interesting, to their, like, the internal hierarchy, to the sort of, like, the admin of the business, which I thought was, it was, it was neat. And, yeah, this makes it feel like it has more personality than the first film. There's, there's more of a kind of unique world this time around and as long along with that it also introduces us to these much much more colorful much more vibrant characters there's like Lawrence Fishburne as this eccentric crime lord there's all these weird kind of gimmicky assassin characters who are who feel a bit like the, the assassins from the raid 2 and that all really made the film much stronger in my opinion than the first one because the first one Really good action, solid technical execution, but I felt like it was lacking in terms of character. This one isn't. There's a really great scene with Peter Serafinowicz, who is this, like, he's like a wine waiter, but he sells firearms, and he still kind of, he talks about weapons in the same way that a wine waiter would talk about wine, you know, with etiquette and class, and that scene was really funny. So I think as a byproduct of these new characters, there's also a much stronger sense of black comedy running through the film. It never goes into full action comedy mode, but there are a few jokes here and there along with some kind of knowingly ridiculous moments. And I think that all of that does sort of make this, it injects a bit of life into it. The comedy is well judged. It never feels like people quipping or, or like the sort of forced awkward Marvel humor. It's more just, comedy because the characters are so ridiculous in the things they do. Like the opening of this film, this isn't a spoiler, it's the opening, is John Wick driving into this place, killing all of this guy's guards just to go up into a room to find the guy that they were protecting and say, by the way, we're cool now. Because he's he's gone there to get he he he's gone there to get revenge, but then he goes there and decides to sort of bury the hatchet, but along the way he has to kill all the guy's guards. And as soon as he gets to the room, he's just like, Yeah, we're cool, and then leaves. And that's the kind of humor here. It's not jokes, it's just sort of ri knowingly ridiculous character motivations and decisions, just like the first film, you know, where he does it all because they killed his puppy. But I think that that is played up a lot more here. And uh, in in particular, some of these moments of humour work their way into the action sequences in quite a inventive, funny way. And speaking of those action sequences, holy crap are they good. I vaguely remember when we talked about the first film saying that there was a nightclub sequence that was a highlight. Okay, well, that was a good action sequence. The action sequences in this film are incredible. They're some of my favourite action sequences that I've seen in a long time. They're really well choreographed, kind of almost balletic I would say. Uh, they're really really well staged and presented in like long takes, no shaky cam, you can tell what's going on, and they're always put in interesting locations, and that that really helped as well. Like there's a there's a fight at the end in a hall of mirrors, and I've seen fights in hall of mirrors before, they do it quite a lot, but this film used it really well. And they do use locations really well. So yeah, fight sequences, oh my god, they're amazing. The violence as well, the, the level of violence is really satisfying. There's a bit with a pencil that genuinely made me kind of squirm. Uh, but in a good way, it's fun, it's all good fun. In terms of negatives, I only really have nitpicks. Um, like there's one, whilst I think all the action sequences are really, really well staged, there was one where I didn't like the visuals that much because it was really dark and the only light source really came from flashlights on guns, but that just meant that I was kind of seeing f flashlights, then John would shoot and then the flashlights would just sort of turn off because the person had fallen down and it felt like all I could see was darkness and then flashlights. And it, I felt like this is probably a really well staged action sequence, but I wish I could see it a bit better. But at the same time, I don't feel like that was ineptitude. I think that that was a stylish decision. Basically, every action sequence in this film has a different visual identity. Uh, they all look very different. And I think that in that particular action sequence, they were going for something else. I just didn't like it as much because I felt like I couldn't really see what was going on as well. And with John Wick, I want to see what's going on because it's so cool. Uh, a couple of other nitpicks, mainly to do with little things like that. But overall, I really liked this film. I thought it had a much better story, much more personality than the first film. And I think that they actually improved on the action sequences even more. Very little negative. It also is possibly the strongest sequel setup that I've seen in a long time. 
I think they're talking about doing this as a trilogy now, and I honestly can't wait for the third film based on the ending here. It was a really, really good tease, and it was also story motivated. So yeah, I'm really excited for John Wick 3, which I didn't think I would be. I Overall, I had a blast with this film. Very, very fun. Very, very technically well made as well, which is obviously the strong point of the first film, but here it's combined with a better story. I'm going to give John Wick 2 a 9 out of 10. I really, really enjoyed it, and I recommend that any action fan go see it. Thank you for listening. Um, if you want to see more of this, we've got thousands and thousands of reviews now. We've been doing this for like two years. Uh, like and subscribe, and uh, yeah. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.